What's up, everybody? This is Alex from Title Boxing Club in Rochester, New York, with your Boxing 30 Class of the Day. I am back, and we've had some holidays recently, sort of holidays, with Star Wars Day, May the 4th. We did a Star Wars themed class. Obi-Wan Kenobi, thanks for uh, filling in for me. Then yesterday, Steph, thanks for filling in for me for the Cinco de Mayo. Uh, she talked a lot about the great history of Mexican fighters. Uh, I love that stuff. She loves that stuff. Hope you guys found it informative and fun. Now, today, it's going to be a letdown, right? Because there's no holiday on May the 6th. No, no, it's Why Wednesday. And I'm actually going to even hold on to Cinco de Mayo just a little bit longer and talk about some of those aforementioned great Mexican fighters that Steph brought up yesterday. And I bring up famous fighters all the time. If you've ever been to my classes, you know this. Mike Tyson is referenced almost daily, uh, as is Mickey Ward, as is... Pretty much any fighter, Manny Pacquiao, whatever it relates to in the combination, I love talking about those famous fighters. So the question is, why on this Why Wednesday? Why do I do that? I mean, the answer is probably obvious. I love boxing. I love MMA. I love watching these guys. I'm a fan. But that doesn't quite capture everything. And that may not relate to you. You may not be a big fan like I am. Uh, but that's okay. I still think, no matter what, watching the great athletes of any sport, or just the greats in general, is such a good exercise for your own mind and your own development. Now, you may never be as good as them. Most people can't. And that's what makes them so special. But having that dream in your mind, having that bar to look at watching somebody move, watching the way they do it, can help you in your own development. I can explain technique to the cows come home to I'm blue in the face, and I will. Those cows will be home. But sometimes it's you visualizing in your head what a perfect punch should look like or what you know a hook should look like and seeing that great fighter can give you that perspective you guys some of you are probably way too young to remember there's a commercial uh used to be for gatorade i think it was in the 90s and it was called they had a song be like mike mike as in michael jordan so it was talking about how just everybody you know playing basketball at home you're pretending like you're michael jordan you're imagining hitting that last shot to win the championship everybody does that everybody dreams and the interesting thing too, if you remember Michael Jordan at all, in the 80s, there was nobody like him in early 90s. He got older, he got better in some ways, but he wasn't the human highlight reel that he was originally. And so many players grew up watching him, so many people in general grew up watching him. And it's no surprise that as the next generation of basketball players started to come in, they all were a lot more like Michael Jordan. Like, you know, Kobe Bryant, for one, could do things that only Michael Jordan could do before, because they grew up watching him and it gave them that that bar to hit that showed them what greatness looked like to make them greater themselves. So, long-winded Why Wednesday, I know, but I'm gonna talk about some famous fighters, of course, and I'll stick with the, the Mexican fighters like Steph did yesterday, because I think there are some great examples to learn from. If you're browsing on your own, you got nothing to do in the quarantine, you need a little break, watching some of these guys, just watching some of the greats move around. Now, one thing I'll say, a little disclaimer, some guys are so great that they break all the rules. Like, Muhammad Ali is a great example. Fun to watch, for sure, and still good to watch. But he'll do stuff that I don't necessarily think you should do, and no boxing coach will, but that's because he is the greatest. So that's your homework. If you want to just find a, a, a new fighter, someone to study, someone that you like, someone that you connect with, it will make you better, even if you don't care necessarily about boxing that much. And we'll get started with that warm-up, which I hope you care about a lot in just a minute. All right, let's get warm, everybody, with this little fast feet in place. Nice and fast. Staying on the balls of your feet, not letting those heels touch the ground, and going fast. You should hear that nice little tap, tap, tap sound to tell you how fast you're going. But we're going to have to also listen up because I'm going to be giving you some call-outs. They're nice and simple. I'm just going to call left or right. And when I do, you're just going to bring that foot out wide as wide as you can, and then back to those fast feet. That's it. Are you ready? Let's go right. Back to those fast feet. Left. Left. Right, come on, keep going, keep going, keep it left. Faster, faster, right, right, left, 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 right, right, left, right. Come on, five seconds, left, right, right, right. Quick squats, go. Sit those hips down nice and quick. You don't have to get deep. We're just doing quick, almost more like a duck. So keep that weight on the heels. Don't let that chest come forward. Just quick squats. You can even almost pulse it out if you want to, if that's easier for you. I like coming all the way up and just going into those quick, quick squats. Not too deep. Come on, keep going, keep going. You got five more seconds. Four, three, two, 
One, we're gonna do three quick jumps. One, two, three. Then we're gonna bring that inside of our foot to our hand. And then one, two, three, alternate. One, two, three, boom. One, two, three, touch. One, three, touch. Like almost like a jump rope bounce. Maybe a little higher. Then you're getting that one, two, three, touch. One, two, three, touch. Stretching out that piriformis. Getting those legs nice and loose. Getting those calves and ankles going. Two, three, touch. One, two, three, touch. One, three, touch. Stretching out that back just a little bit. Let me touch that foot. Bringing that foot in, bringing that knee out, touch. Come on, you got five seconds. Four, three, two, one. We're going down to the ground, high plank. We are going to do a walking high plank to the side. Take a few steps. Burpee. Back down, high plank, walk it out, walk it out. Jump the feet in, burpee. Drop straight down, bring the feet back. You can either jump them back, or do them one at a time. Come back into that burpee. So you're going hot walking high plank to the side. Maybe take one, two, three, four steps. Burpee, back down, repeat. Now you can slow this down. You can do those easy burpees where you just go one foot, one foot, one foot, one foot. Walk it out. One, two, three, four. Burpee. You can add that jump if you want. You can even add a push up if you want. It's your workout. You got five more seconds. Come on, keep going. Five, four, three, two, one. We're going back up, back to those fast feet. Same thing, same drill as before. I say right, boom, bring that right foot out. I say left, boom, that left foot out. A little reaction training. Come on, left. There we go, good job. Right, right, right. Come on, keep going. Right, 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 uh, right. What should we do? Right, come on, faster, a little faster. Right, left, right, left, right. Come on, right, left, left, right, left, right, left, right. Back to those quick squats. Maybe a little quicker this time. Drop those hips straight down, weight on the heels, toes almost coming up. Come on, a little quick ducks. Like you're ducking under a punch. Come on, you got five, four, Three, two, one. Back to those. One, two, three. Boom. But let's add a little extra air on those jumps. Like Air Jordan. Boom. One, two, three. Touch. One, two, three. Touch. One, two, three. Touch. One, two, three. Touch. Come on. Pick up that pace. Pick up that jump a little bit if you can. You don't need to bend the knees and get too deep into a squat. You can almost just use those ankles, use those calves. Use those glutes to give you that air. Come on, you got five, four, three, two, one. Hands up, boxing stance. We're gonna shuffle half circle to our left, duck down, shuffle back to the middle, duck down, shuffle half circle to our right, duck down. So we're doing a little half circle with a duck at each of those three points. Make sure you're in that fighting stance and you are maintaining it as you move. Don't worry so much about speed. If you feel like you've got it down, you feel like you're doing pretty well, you can start to speed that up. A little circle, circle, and circle, circle. Keeping those hands up. Try not to strain those shoulders up. Keep them relaxed. Let the elbows rest on the rib cage. Come on. You got five, four, three, two. We're gonna need some room for this one. Hopefully you got a little room going forward. Power skaters forward. So we're gonna drive forward, skater lunge style, boom, boom. And then you can either shuffle back, fast feet back, whatever you want, jump back. And then we're gonna do an explosive skater hop, side, 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 however much speed you have. Shuffle back, maybe in that fighting stance, boom. Cross those hands across that body. You could even touch the ground here if you want to. Take a drive forward, get all the way down, touch. Drive forward, get all the way down, touch. Open up that spine. I like putting the hands up, moving back like you would in that fighting stance. Come on, give me a few more. And we got one more exercise, and this warm up is done. Power skaters, I want you to really drive it, really explosive. Push and touch, push and touch, push and touch. Come on, five, four, three, two, 
one, let's go high knees. Pick those knees up nice and high, nice and high. Now we're gonna do a little count here. You're gonna count three high knees and you're gonna go down to a single leg burpee. So one, two, three, single leg, oops, sorry. Left foot up, jump it in. High knees, one, two, three, single leg, jump it out, jump it in. One, two, three, single leg, jump it out, jump it in. One, two, three, single leg, get down, jump it in, jump it out, pick up that other foot. Two, three, you can't just do a regular burpee if you want to. That single leg though, get that extra, extra burn in those quads. Anyway, great job. Let's get ready for round number one. All right, for round one, the very first fighter we're gonna talk about is Saul Canelo Alvarez. Now he is currently the champion, so he's a great guy to check out if you're looking for a boxer to get into. He does a lot of things very well. Most notably, he's got that power lead hook. He's got a great lead hook. A lot of his knockouts come off of it. He's also good at throwing punches and going into a roll or going into defense, as well as throwing punches coming out of that defense. So you'll see a lot of his, if you look at his highlight reel knockouts, you'll see him throw a punch, roll, and then suddenly the guy goes down and you're like, where was that punch even there? Gotta see it on replay to check it out. So he's, we'll do a little bit of that. In the first one, we're gonna throw an overhand because he doesn't do it a ton, but one of his first highlight reel knockouts was a great overhand punch. So here's that combo. We're gonna throw a lead hook to the head. We're gonna throw that cross, but as we pull that hand back, we are already going into that roll, coming out of it, overhand, lead body shot. So lead hook to the head, cross, roll, overhand, lead body shot, let's do it. Roll, overhand, lead body shot. Now it's a fine line when you throw that cross, you don't wanna already be going into that roll as you throw it, you can, but I want you to really work on that technique of bringing that hand back and as you do, you're going under, coming over the top, throwing that overhand and that overhand punch, make sure we're bringing it all the way over the top, bringing the, rotating that shoulder, bringing that shoulder to that cheek. You are letting the hand drop for a second, but don't make it crazy. Don't go full windmill on me. Come on, so lead hook, cross, roll, overhand, body shot. When you start to get it, you can start to speed up. As long as you don't sacrifice that technique. Come on, hook, cross, roll, overhand, lead body shot. Make sure that hand comes right back to that chin as you throw that lead body shot, as that lead body shot lands, boom, bring it right back. Bring it back with that weight. Come on, one more time. Hook, cross, roll, overhand body shot. We're going four speed hooks. One, two, three, four, and then a big power lead hook. One, two, three, four, boom. One, two, three, four, boom. Power in that lead hook. Power in all of them. But the first four are more about speed. The fifth one is about the power. See, it's kind of like May the 4th. You got four punches, five punches, Wait, no. Yeah, May. May is the fifth month. More like Cinco de Mayo. Five punches on the fifth day of May. Come on, keep going. And I know it's not Cinco de Mayo. Five, four, three, two, boom. Back to that combo. Go. Hook, cross, immediate roll, overhand, body shot. Hook, cross, roll, overhand, body shot. Use the roll to load up the overhand. Not by just necessarily dropping the hand, although you can, but more about shifting that weight, getting that weight into position to throw that great overhand punch. Hook, cross, roll, load it up, boom, boom. And then reset, throw it again. Come on, five seconds, get two more in. We're gonna go back to that burnout, but this time it's body shot. So it's quick, one, two, three, four, boom. Power on the fifth one. One, two, three, four, boom. Power on the fifth one. I do like my numbers. Two, three, four, boom. Power on the fifth one. Why do I like those numbers? Guess on why Wednesday, I can tell you, keep going. As long as you keep going. It just gives your mind something to focus on. Bop, 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 boom. Come on, five more seconds. And we're going back to that combo one more time. In three, two, one. Hook, cross, roll, overhand, body shot. Hook, cross, roll, overhand, body shot. Keeping it nice and simple, just alternating between that lead and rear hand. Five more seconds. Same burnout, hooks and body shots. So it's one, two, three, four, five to the head. One, two, three, four, five to the body. One, two, three, four, five to the head. I want you to speed it up and I want you to power it up. Even though you're punching air, give me that good snap. Put them away in the first round. Come on. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And time, everybody. Good job. We're just doing a little jump rope in place. But we're gonna do that one, two. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Hopping twice on that single leg. 
and then switch and you can add that little kick in there if you want to. I'm gonna tell you about round two. Round two, now this is actually my favorite Mexican fight. I think he's the one guy Steph didn't mention yesterday. He is Hector Macho Camacho, the Macho Man. How could you not love the Macho Man? And also, watch his highlight reel if you haven't before. It's awesome, he is explosive and powerful. I love it, he also has, he's a left-handed guy, but he has an amazingly powerful lead uppercut, which I know is awkward for a lot of us to throw. That's normal, we're gonna work on it, we're gonna get better. So, that combo, I want you to think about that explosive power. You're gonna throw the jab, even when he throws jabs, he looks very athletic, he gets into it. Jab, and then you're gonna throw that rear body shot, then you're gonna throw two lead uppercuts and a cross, but the lead uppercuts have gotta be killers. Let's kill him! Jab, rear hook to the body, upper, upper, cross. Jam, rear body shut, lead uppercut, lead uppercut, cross, and bring that hand back. On those power lead uppercuts, you gotta use the legs. That's the only place it's gonna come from, and you gotta reset, boom, boom. Make sure as soon as you transfer that weight forward, you bring that weight back to reload it. Use that weight transfer, turn those hips, come on. Jam, rear body shot, upper, upper, cross. And make sure you bring that cross hand back too. Again, shift that weight, weight distribution, come on. Jam, body, upper, upper, cross. Keep those elbows in on those uppercuts and those jab crosses. Come on, jam, body shot, upper, upper, cross. Make sure we're turning on those uppercuts. Coming straight up the middle, zipping up that sweatshirt. Come on, jam, boom, 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 cross. Rotate those shoulders all the way through that cross and bring it back. You got five seconds. Same kind of burnout we did last time except with uppercuts. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four, fast. And then on the fifth one, that's your lead, big power. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Come on. One, two, three, four, five. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco. Come on, big power. Keep that elbow in. One, two, three, four, five. It actually sounds better in Spanish, but I won't butcher that accent, come on. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco. You got five seconds, give me one more. And we go back to that combo. Jab, rear body shot, upper, upper, cross. Bring that hand back, come on. Let's add two more lead uppercuts on for power, go. Jab, rear body shot, upper, upper, cross, upper, upper. Yeah, we're throwing a lot of lead uppercuts. They may not feel as good as the Macho Man, but that's okay. He didn't start throwing great lead uppercuts. When he began, it takes practice. It takes power. You gotta learn how to load those hips. You gotta get your body used to it. Build that muscle memory. Like I said, I can tell you how to do this, but if you watch somebody do it really well, that is a great way to learn that technique. Imagine that in your mind. You got five seconds. We're gonna go back to those uppercuts, but now, four fast uppercuts, two rear uppercuts. So, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco. Come on. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, and then a big rear uppercut. Just like that lead uppercut, we reload it. Bring it all the way back. Shift that way back. Come on. One, two, three, four, five. Come on, you got five seconds. We're gonna go back to that little double lead uppercut, and we're gonna alternate. So one, two, three, four, five. 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 Double on that last one. Come on, four, five, three. Time, good job, everybody. Active breaths, we're just gonna do a little jump forward, backward, side to side. I always like doing these just to work those ankles and those hips, keeping us loose, keeping us able to move. Next round, we're talking about Oscar De La Hoya. So we're gonna have to move pretty well because he was the golden boy. He fought a ton of fights. Steph talked about yesterday, amazing amount of fights, won almost all of them. You look at him though, he never really got dinged up. His pretty face stayed pretty his whole career pretty much. So we're gonna go, we're gonna make sure we move after each of these punches. The other thing about him is like uh, Macho Man, he was left-handed, He was, but unlike Macho Man, he didn't fight left-handed. As a kid, they had him in an orthodox stance. So he had a very powerful, left hand, even though it was his lead hand. So we're gonna start off with a very powerful jab. We're gonna follow up with a cross, lead hook, cross, and then we're gonna to move to the side. So here we go. Hop in, jab, cross, hook, cross, move to the side. Hop in, jab, cross, hook, cross, move to the side. 
It's just that simple. Those simple punches. Jam, cross, hook, cross, and take a little hop step to the side. Now you can go to that rear side or you can mix it up and go to that lead side. You can circle, jam, cross, hook, cross, but it has to be quick. That's the only thing. Because once you get done punching somebody, your options are punch them some more or get out of the way. You don't want to just stand there and see what they do necessarily. They're probably going to hit you back. So on that power jab, I want you driving off that foot. Boom, coming in, just like we did when they're those power skaters in the warm up. You're driving up that foot, using that momentum to get behind the jab. By keeping that elbow in and not letting it flare out, you are harnessing the power from that burst forward. If your hand's out here, you're not getting as much power. But if you go right down the middle, you're taking all that power with you into that jab. You get a very powerful jab. It did not feel good. Sometimes he would use it as a pawing jab. Sometimes he would use it just to keep pressure on, but he could actually knock somebody out with his jab. His lead hook was also powerful too, of course, because first of all, that's true for almost every Mexican fighter, but being left-handed, that was his dominant hand on his lead hook. Five more seconds, we're going into that burnout. We're gonna keep it nice and simple. We're gonna throw four fast, Jabs, and number five is a big cross. So we're keeping that same one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Big power. Elbows in, boom. Make sure you're turning that shoulder over on the cross like a whip. Come on. One, two, three, four, five. And if you want to be moving, one, two, three, four, five. You can. One, two, three, four, five. Move. One, two, three, four, five. Keep going. Come on. Eight seconds. One, two, three, four, five. Five, you're gonna feel tired in that lead hand. Come on, one, two, three, four, five. Back to that combo, go. Power jab in, cross, hook, cross, move. I don't care where you move, but it's gotta be quick. Jab, cross, hook, cross, move. Jab, cross, hook, cross, move. And then I want you to try to throw that combo right after the move and making sure on the jab, we're hopping in. You're driving off those toes, keeping that heel off the ground. Come on, five more seconds. We're going back to that burnout in three, two, one. One, two, three, four, five. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco. Come on, you can even count it out to yourself like that. Your own voice will help you develop that speed and power. Quick, one, two, three, four, boom. Machine gun jabs, followed by that cross. Let's add that lead hook on. Three, two, one, one, two, three, four, cross hook. One, two, three, four, cross hook. One, two, three, four, cross hook. Come on. Two, three, four, cross hook. One, two, three, time. Good job, everybody. Active rest. We're gonna once again stay in that fighting stance and we're gonna shuffle as quickly forward and quickly back as we can. Just shuffling forward and back here. Always moving with that same foot. That's the direction you're going. So if I'm going forward, my forward foot moves first, my back foot trails opposite if I'm going backwards. Now, next round, another one of my favorites, Julio Cesar Chavez. Steph talked about him as well. Great link. Now, he was the ultimate pressure fighter. Textbook pressure fighter. He had cardio for days. So, we're going to do a 30-30-30 round where we keep moving and keep going forward. First 30 seconds, he threw a lot of good body shots he got inside. So, we're going to throw a lead hook to the head. Lead body shot, rear body shot, lead body shot, uppercut. So, hook to the head. Three body shots, alternating with hook to the head. Lead body shot, rear body shot, lead body shot, uppercut. Let's do it. Lead hook head, lead body shot, rear body shot, lead body shot, uppercut. Stay nice and compact in this. Hook high, same hand, hook low, hook low, hook low, uppercut. Now you gotta be quick on those body shots. Boom, one, two, three, bam. Really end with that power on the uppercut, but make sure you don't let that hand stay out there. Bring it back, come on. Throw that uppercut, boom, bring it right back and reset. You got five seconds. Head, body, 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 head. Come on, non-stop uppers in three, two, one. Just throw those uppercuts, throw those uppercuts. They gotta be good though. You gotta use your hips and legs. Get that little belt. When I call it left, you're gonna throw a hook with that left hand. When I call it right, you throw a hook with that right hand. Come on, reaction training, left. Back to those uppercuts, back to those uppercuts. Right, back to those uppercuts, left. Come on, back to those uppercuts, fast, fast. Put that pressure on, in fact, move forward. Right, move forward to those uppercuts, left. Move forward, turn around if you need to, right. Move forward, left. Non-stop, jab cross, let's go. Go, jab cross, right down the middle, right down the middle. Keep 
moving. This is about pushing that cardio. This time when I say hit, you're gonna throw four uppercuts, all moving forward. Then back to those jab crosses, hit, go. One, two, three, four, back to those jab crosses. Fast, 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 fast. If you run out of room, turn around. Hit, go. One, two, three, four, moving forward on each punch. Come on, hit. One, two, three, four, moving forward. Jab cross, jab cross, hit. One, two, three, four, come on, hit. One, two, three, four, back to that first combo, go. Lead hook to the head, lead body shot. Rear body shot, lead body shot, uppercut. Then I want you moving forward. Dip that head down too as you do. That's the one thing as you throw that uppercut and move forward. Get low when you get move forward. He was great at doing that. He'd get guys against the ropes. He'd start to get his head low. So come on, hook head, hook body, rear body, lead body, rear uppercut, move, move, duck and move forward. Five more seconds. Get this combo down. Let's get a really good one. And we're going back to those uppers. In three, two, one, go uppers. Come on, left, throw that left hook, come on. It doesn't matter if you're right or left handed. Right, just throw that hand. Left, come on, keep going, keep going. Really dig into those uppercuts. Give me some power, give me some explosion. Right, come on, right, come on, left, 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 right. Five seconds, come on, non-stop jab crosses. Right, in three, two, one, go, 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 jab crosses. I want you moving forward. I want you moving forward. When I say hit, it's four uppercuts. Go, hit, one, two, three, four. Back to those jab crosses, come on. Come on, when I say hit, it's now four hooks. Moving forward, hit, one, two, three, four. Back to those jab crosses, back to those jab crosses. When I say hit, it's now four body shots. Hit, one, two, three, four. Back to those jab crosses, 10 seconds, 10 seconds. Hit, uppercuts, four. Back to those jab crosses, hit, head hooks. One, two, three, four. Come on, back to those jab crosses, hit, body shots. Three, four, back to those jab crosses, faster. Nice work. All right, guys, let's get a mat. And we'll do some core. All that power in here. All that power is going to help you. Even on those awkward punches like those lead uppercuts, it's about getting those hips nice and strong. So we'll do a lot of hip work today. All right, so one of the best things we can do for those hips are those hip bridges. Bring those heels all the way in. Drive those hips all the way up. Here we go. Push those hips up nice and high. Drive off those heels. You can bring those toes off the ground. Nice and easy. Now, this isn't too hard. We're going to go into single leg with our right foot up. In three, two, one. Single leg hip bridges. Just up and down. Nice and easy. Keep those hips as high as you can. Really drive off that heel. Come on. You got five, four, three. Two, one, back to double leg, hip bridges. We're gonna do a lot of these. Keep the neck and shoulders relaxed. Push those hips up a little higher. We're gonna go to left leg up, single leg hip bridges in three, two, one. Go, really push off those hips. Get nice and high, come on. You wanna feel it, you wanna feel it. Keep going, keep going. Come on, keep that left leg up. Keep that leg nice and straight. You can glue those knees together. If it helps, come on, keep going. You got five, four, three, two, one. Back to double legs, except this time we're gonna hold it at the top for five, four, three, two, one. So they go back down, driving straight back up. Five, I want you to get those hips a little higher. Four, three, two, one. Back down and lift up. Five, come on, keep those hips a little high. You should feel those quads stretching. Two, one, back down, bring those heels in as close as you can. Drive back up, five, four, three, two, one. Last time with both legs. Drive it up and hold for five, four, three, two, one. Single leg, same thing, right foot up, and we drive and hold. Relax the neck and shoulders. Three, two, one. Back down and lift up. Five, four. Really try to get those hips up high. Two, one. Back down. Little, not a rest though. Come on, bring them up. Five, four, three, two, one. Last time. Here we go. Lift them up and hold it for five, four. Actually, you know what? We're going to hold it a little longer this time. So keep going, keep going, keep going. Now, five, four, three, two, 
one, and we switch. Left leg is up, here we go. Drive up off that heel, make sure again that right heel is back as far as you can. Five, four, three, two, one. Back down, we get over in the front, and lift straight back up, hold it. Five, four, three, two, one. Again, back down, straight back up. Push off those heels. Are your hips as high as they can go? Three, two, one. Last one, and we're going 10 seconds here. Keep that leg straight and hold it up. For 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Nice work. We're gonna get into a side plank position here. Side plank. Elbow under the shoulder, hips are nice and steady. And what we're gonna do is bring that top leg over as far as we can and back as far as we can. Keep those hips up, over and back with that foot. Touch your toe to the ground. The further you go, the better it is. You should really feel it in those glutes. Now, if you gotta have your inside knee down, that's okay. Go even further then. Go even further, really get that stretch and work those glutes. Do not let the hips come down, especially if you got that knee on the ground. Keep those hips up as high as you can. Come on, walk that foot over, walk it back. Walk it over, walk it back. You got five, four, three, I mean step it over. Two, one, we're gonna go down, down to that same side, bring that top foot over, and we're just lifting that inside leg as high as we can go. Doesn't usually go very high for most of us, that's okay. That is all right. We're working those hip internal rotators. They get missed a lot. I know this doesn't feel like too much, but we'll keep going a little longer. You're going to start to feel something in those glutes and the inside of your legs. Come on, keep going, keep going. I'm starting to feel it now. We got five, four, three, two, one. Here we go. Back to that elbow plank, and we're walking that foot over and back. Over and back. Step it as far over as you can. Bring it back. Good work. So far, we won't stay here as long. Going back to those inside leg lifts. In three, two, one, inside leg. Let's bring that top foot over. Get that little stretch right here. And bring that foot up. High as you can. Keep that toe pointed out or flexed, whatever you want. Just make sure that you're nice and sideways here. You got five, four, three, two, one. Like I said extra hip work today. Good for those lead uppercuts. So side plank on the other side, you know the drill. Step over and back, step over and back. Keep those hips up. Do not let them drop. Touch your toe, bring it back. Touch your toe, bring it back. Keep them up nice and high. Come on. We got five more seconds and we're going back down to that side we're going to lift that inside leg in three two one back down to that side bring the other foot over and we just lift we just lift here nice and easy come on keep working it keep going we got about 90 seconds left do not stop you're going to feel this more in the glutes today that's okay okay some days your abs can get a little bit of a break Three, two, one. Last time into that side plank. Bring that foot back and forth. Try to just tap the ground if you can. Try not to rest it too long. See so if you can maybe pick that pace up. Expand that range. Back to the side in three, two, one. Inside leg lifts. Here we go. Here we go. Bring them up. Bring them up and back. I mean up and down. Five, four. Three, lift it up a little higher, two, one, high plank. Here's how we finish. Take one, your right foot, cross it over that left foot, and we're just gonna hold. 15 seconds here, hold it, hold it, hold it. Do not let those hips turn up. Keep those hips flat with the ground. We're gonna switch that other foot over, cross that other foot behind in three, two, one. Bring that other foot over, and again, keep those hips nice and level, keep them nice and flat. 15 seconds, we're gonna hold this to the bell. We're also getting a little stretch while we do. Good work today, everybody. I hope you had fun. Hope you missed me. 
And uh, only have five seconds left. Keep going, everybody. Keep that position. And time. Great job. Nice going. Thanks for joining me on Why Wednesday. Tomorrow's Throwback Thursday. And you know another thing I forgot to mention too about watching watching other people like famous fighters. They actually don't even have to be famous fighters. If you're in a class, someone's doing really well, they're going really hard, watch them. See what they do. I mean, don't get creepy, but uh, sometimes they can inspire you to work a little harder. Like anyone who's ever been next to Rich in a class knows what I'm talking about. You will do, you will go harder when you're next to Rich. You just can't help it because his energy is right there. So let people be your inspiration, even in a class. You guys are my inspiration. I miss you all so much. Can't wait to see you again. But I'll see you soon, virtually, tomorrow. And of course we will hit it hard.